Welcome to Marketing Made Simple TV. My name is Jeff Ogden, the host of the show, and we're really excited to have you back because we've got a couple wonderful guests today that are going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned. We're going to blow your off. Let me introduce you to Dr. Mark and Charlie. Hello there. How's hey, everybody? Hey. Hello. Glad to have you on the show. Uh, my socks, though, because I want to make sure they're not being blown off. I mean, I saw what you <laughs> heard what you said, and I want to be careful here. So, well, it already blew our hair off. So, you know, yeah, what are you gonna yeah. do? Well, I don't have much hair either. So, yeah, but <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. Cats, cats and me get along pretty well, but uh, I'm going to ask two gentlemen. Nope. Just... So many different things together that we've uh, had to change hats so many times that we've lost our hair. So, in I, any case, I understand it happens. You know, but the follically challenged among us. But, but I'm really excited to have you on the show today, and I've seen your guys' work, and it's really interesting, so I want to talk to you about it today. But I'll okay. start you off with the same question I ask every guest on the show, the same first question. Who are you, and what do you do? You want to take that one, Dr. Mark? Well, who are you? My name is Dr. Mark Kosman. This is Charlie Seymour, Jr. Uh, I'm a clinical psychologist by training uh, ages ago, and uh, Charlie and I have been working together for several years now, developing uh, marketing plans for people and specializing in video that you know gets you noticed and gets attention. We like to call him the entrepreneurial psychologist, and I'm kind of that video crazed MBA marketer. I admit in some circles that I have an MBA from Wharton, but it's not the kind of thing I do. No green eye shade on me, no corporate um, working with you. We work with a lot of small businesses and professionals and so that's what we do, and we've been doing this for about three years together in our partnership, drmarkandcharlie.com. Good, and it's good to have you on the show. Now, one of the things you mentioned, uh, Charlie, is that you have a degree from the Wharton School, and Mark has a, a, a Ph.D. in psychology. How did you – Actually, a PsyD, if you want to be technical. Yes, yeah, a doctor of psychology. Okay. All right, whatever. You get to put doctor in front of your name, so exactly. that's, that's all that well, matters. Right? Don't we? <laughs> That's all that really matters. So how did two middle-aged, over-educated men come together and create this uh, abortion you call Dr. Mark and Charlie? <laughs> oh, wow. He, wow. He knows us well. We can end the show right there. That's all you need to know at that point. Um, and really, I'm a good bit older than he is, so I'm not sure he's the middle age, or maybe he's really middle-aged uh, and I'm just beyond that. But you know. we went to um, a group, let's call it a meetup. It wasn't in those days, but for a number of years, it was there to talk about uh, marketing and what you do in your businesses. And so we were just there as individuals and got to know each other. And one day he writes to me and says, hey, here are some of the things I'm thinking about doing. What are you thinking about doing? Is there anything we should do together? And that literally, that's how our joint venture, our partnership began. Yeah, it just kind of evolved out of these twice a month meetings where, you know, it kind of sort of evolved into the Dr. Mark and Charlie show. And uh, we clearly were on the same wavelength. So it just kind of made sense to maybe formalize that and move forward together. We had some similarities in some real estate background as well. I sold a quarter of a billion dollars worth of commercial real estate. Dr. Mark was investing in doing some work in, in real estate. So we had that in common and we both had a love of marketing. Mm -hmm. Figuring out from like the brain, the psychology of what people really needed, said to them and the help that they needed and then doing the video and the other marketing things which had been my training. And we just love what we do, have a lot of fun in it. Well, you, you clearly have a lot of fun with what you're doing, and, and it's clear that you create a lot of videos, and I've seen a lot of videos. Why is it in marketing, why is video so important to that? Well, you know, we have three steps that we always say that people need to go through if they want to be successful in their marketing, and video plays a real important part in all three of them. So the first one, Dr. Mark, is get found. you got to get found. Uh, you know, we gravitate to video heavily because of really two audiences. You've got the actual audience of the people you're trying to speak to and get them to find you, but Google loves video as well. You know, they own YouTube, and we discovered very quickly that when you put out content in video form as opposed to print or even just audio, it gets sucked onto page one way faster. So we. You, you mean Google's giving a little preference to video because they want to have YouTube make a little bit of money? I am not privy to the uh, the closely guarded algorithm secrets. Uh, we just know from trial and error that you know they're I'm, saving three spaces on all of those ten search results for video. So if you go to a page and there's no video, you can't look at it and say, oh. They don't like video in this topic. No, no, nobody has done video yet. Right. So you can jump ahead by putting video. So that's the first one, to get found. 
You need to be there on the search results that people type in. The second thing, engage. Right. What's more engaging than video? Yeah, we, we often say that video is actually better than a live face-to-face -face meeting. Because, it certainly is better than with meeting you face-to-face. -face. Well, I know yeah. that. But. Because you can actually edit your video, and so once you have a polished you know, video performance or a video presentation, you're on 24-7, uh, 365 days a year uh, at your best, your, your best foot forward. You're, you know, whereas you might have an off day when you're actually meeting with a client, and you might be overly tired, and you might just not have your, your game on that day. So video is the most engaging form of media out there. It's audio, it's visual, you can put titling on there, so it just works. We have a, a video that's the lead video on our DrMarkAndCharlie.com site, and one of the things is, uh, as Dr. Mark was just saying, we don't have to show up. It's like the recording right. artist, having gone into the studio, doesn't show up every time you hit the MP3 player. Right? It's always there and playing. And I, so I joke in that in doing the edit that, no, we're not really two little bald guys inside your, uh, your computer screen. So, right. And luckily, we don't have to actually stand there on the page every time we somebody don't. the page. No. It would be very tiring. So we get found, we engage, and the third thing that we need to do in the marketing, where video also helps out. Right. We want to build automated systems that follow people and you know, really get to that. Because you're not going to make a sale uh, the first time you meet somebody every time. So you no, need to use not. the technology out there. And what we find is there are great automated systems out there that actually could, can deliver follow-up video to people to keep building that relationship over time and, and get the dollars in your pocket. Have you ever been somewhere where you've collected business cards, Jeff, and you take them back and you pull the drawer out a few weeks later and they're there collecting dust? The automated systems will allow right. you to follow up with those people because most of us fall down on the follow-up. So I hope that answers how video can be real important to what your marketing is. Good. It, uh, obviously, you guys do a great job with video, and this is a video show, so I'm a big believer in video as well. But, but talk, tell me a little bit about how you make your videos, because it's not a matter of just like throwing up a camera and shooting some video. You guys, obviously, you must rehearse. You write a script. You, you do very professional-looking videos. How do you go about doing it? For somebody who wants to create videos, what kind of... Sure, there, yeah. there, are, there are a number of steps that we could advise. Um, we did a program a number of years ago that we called One Camera, One Take. Hi, this is Charlie, and I'm holding the camera. Charlie Seymour Jr., and I'm here with Dr. Mark. Now, Dr. Mark, what do you, and you hold right. it up to him, and then you hold it back. That's one way. So it can literally, we can do that with our smartphones right. these days. They all have video in them. It can, so that's it one can be that simple. I mean, so, you know, people have to kind of find their own level and, and sort of work their way up. I, I don't recommend that most people you know, dive in and build a TV studio and, uh, and go for the highest end equipment they can get. Uh, you know, you can get your feet wet with some very basic equipment. The technology is awesome. As, as Charlie said, I mean, you know, most people with a smartphone are walking around with a studio in their pocket. They just don't realize that they've got high quality cameras, they've got high quality audio. Now, granted, you're going to have to do it at arm's length and up close and so forth. Uh, once you kind of get comfortable with that basic camera style, you can start to, you know, slowly build up your skill set and get to the point where, you know, we're sitting in a, in a studio that has three different sets. I mean, we have a green screen set, we have a, a sort of, uh, you know, coffee table talk show kind of set, and then we have our blue screen set here that we can throw some things up to as well. And we can do multi-camera multi, multi -camera and green screen and blue screen and all that kind of stuff. But that's not where most people are going to start. You, and it's not where we started. Need. We've grown into that. We really wanted to be sure that every video that we did as we were starting out together three years ago, that we could turn to clients and say, this is work you can do yourself. You may choose not to. Like, I could change the oil in my car. I'm not sure I could even change the oil in my car. I couldn't <laughs> have built my own house. But, you know, there are things you can do. But certainly in video, you can do those things. But we've grown into it. Yes, we are sitting here with some TV lights, and we've got a nice drop. We've got a screen behind us. But you don't need to start there. We find that the biggest impediment to most people when they're doing video isn't even the editing, it's appearing right. on camera. It's the fear of getting in front of the little red light or the, right now we have a little blue light glowing at us, but uh, you know, so part of it is, is realizing that the most important thing is to start producing video and that you don't even have to be on camera. I mean, we do recommend that people get to the point where they get comfortable on camera, right. but if you're not comfortable on camera, I mean, you know, something as basic as starting to do voiceover video to your PowerPoint or Keynote or something like that, uh, we do some fun animated videos now uh, that, you know, the, there's just great tools to create different styles of video, but you don't have to do the fear of the camera right off the bat because you can create video content 
uh, without that fear of stage fright, let's say. But, and, uh, and you're going to be able to see that if you uh, go to drmarkandcharlie.com, that video right there on the homepage is going to have some animation that starts it off. It's going to have some animation that goes right on top of what we're doing. It's going to use some uh, green screen effects because you're going to see text behind us that's not right on top of us. Right. So we show right in there what we do. We also have uh, further on in that site, we, we did a product a number of years ago to help people get over that stage fright, which you don't right. need, right? Unleash your rock star identity. You can find that on our site as well, or you can go to unleashyourrockstaridentity.com there you go. because it has lots of lessons. We're not uncomfortable, many of us, as we just meet somebody. We're not uncomfortable when we go talk over the backyard fence or go to a local party, right? right? A ball game of our kids. So we build on those throughout that course to show people how to use those skills and take those when you go in front of a crowd or in front of a camera. And I gotta say, the single, if I were to give somebody a, the single piece of advice to get them to start being comfortable in front of the camera, I think a lot of people panic because in their mind, you know, they're going back to that early grade school experience of giving their first book report. In front of all those people. Shaking with the, you know, the paper and they're worried about completely embarrassing themselves. So I guess two pieces of advice, one is, the camera is one single person that you're talking to, not a big giant crowd of people. So get comfortable with the one person you're talking to. Make it your best friend. You know, make right. it. And remember that unless you're live, which most people are not going to be doing uh, in the video that they produce, you're in complete control. You get to hit delete over and over and over again. It's I ones mean, and zeros. Throw them away if you don't like right. what it looks like. So get in front of the com camera, have some fun, loosen up, uh, you know, and then find what you like and toss out what you don't like and right. uh, learn how to you know, do some basic editing to, to clean it up and, and make it work. But, you know. So you can go from very simple to very complex. Yes, we do some very complex ones as well. But we also do an awful lot of very simple videos because it's what you're telling the story and it's engaging and it's getting the word out. Those are some great tips on, on video. Start small, um, record it, edit it, so you can do things over again. Before we go on and talk to you a little bit more, I want to just talk about the offer from our sponsor. We'll take a quick commercial break here. Um, Eloqua, who sponsors this show, has an offer of the Grande Guide to Sales Enablement um, on this show. So uh, actually, it's not that one. It's the Grande Guide to Sales Enablement. My fault, uh, Craig. But... If you just click the button in the upper right, you will uh, be able to download this show. So um, I, I hope everyone will, you know, it, they, they have great content at Eloqua, and you'll really enjoy it, and you'll learn a lot. So not only did you get to watch Dr. Mark and Charlie talking about all this wonderful stuff, but you can download stuff and read some really interesting content from Eloqua. Okay, so let's talk about, you, you talk about getting found and how video goes to the top of search uh, re, uh, results in Google. What about, let's drill down on engage a little bit. How do you go about engaging people? Interesting hmm. on that. We often tell people that we don't want your website to be number one. What? Well, if your website's number one, First of all, there are nine other people there on the search results, so why spend all that time bringing At people least over nine. for your Nine organic and then the paid Right, the ones yeah. over there, yeah. right? So we don't want to, we want to have individual, lots of small, tightly focused content there. But aging is letting them see you. People like to work with people, not big, nondescript, monolithic businesses. So you know who you're getting when you get Dr. Mark and Charlie. You're seeing us here. That's what can happen to you. So maybe you like dogs. Maybe you fly model trains. Whatever it is, share who you are plus whatever your specialty is so people get to see you. It's very engaging. There's another component to engage that's absolutely critical, though, and that is with whom are you seeking to engage? And I think that's part of the, the mistake that a lot of people make is that they're too themselves. Absolutely. You've got to show your personality. You've got to be yourself. But the, the part that comes before is what we refer to as the define phase of, of really kind of creating your marketing campaign. We often talk about four phases, assess, define, create, and then monitor. The define part is really part of the engagement. It, you have to get really clear about who is your ideal client. Uh, and the, you want to get super crystal clear. I was saying before that you want to think of the camera as your best friend. But once you've done that define work, you want to think of that camera as your ideal client. For a lot of professionals, let's say, it's what you do all day long when you first meet a new potential client, either in a networking setting or they've come to your office for 
an intake, if it's a medical kind of thing, you have a, a way of relating to that person, speaking to that person, showing your expertise, making them comfortable. That's who the camera is for you. So part of the engagement is knowing exactly who your audience is, but make it an audience of one. Again, not a, an audience of, of millions. It's, it's the one One ideal person client. is watching the video at a time. So exactly. we always want to talk to one person at a time. So we talk to you, not to all of you, like right. there's a big crowd here. Let me give you a quick example here. Uh, before we started together, I had a professional photography business. So one of the things I did was bar mitzvahs. One of the things that I did was bat mitzvahs. One of the things I did was weddings. If I walked up to a bride and said, I'm the best bar mitzvah photographer you've ever seen, right. she'd walk the other way. She said, well, why do I care about that? I need a wedding photographer. Even though 95% of what I did, same guy, same eye, same camera, same album company, same every, 95 percent the same within the building of my business, the doorway through which I want to bring her has to say wedding. Now, if she's a 25-year-old bride, I will say that differently mm -hmm. from what it'll be for a 45-year-old bride getting married for the second time. That's now a second doorway. So you need to engage not with people out there for weddings, but that specific bride you're talking to. A lot of people get lazy. Right. They want to just have the message out well, there without defining. La lazy or they just haven't really thought it through. I mean, you, you, they're thinking in terms of I got to create a promotional video for my business, uh, but now you're speaking to everyone, and if you're speaking to everyone, you're speaking to no one. Right. So you want to create lots of content, and uh, you want to tie it, of course, to to the titling and the keywords and the and the things that are going to help get it found. But People are going to engage when you're speaking to them, and they recognize that you are speaking to them and not some generic audience. They're going to perk up and listen if you know, they recognize that uh, the vocabulary you're using, the, the style of speaking. Uh, you know, if you're looking for a younger, hipper, fun audience, you want to make sure that, that, that that's what you're doing to engage. If you're looking for uh, a highly professional audience, you don't want to sound overly enthusiastic like a used car sales guy, you want to sound like a professional. You, you, know? need, to, you need to match the message to the market. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll give you another example real quickly on this one. I went to a doctor for a series of tests and thought the guy was great. He moved out of the area. The two business partners left behind, I couldn't understand their English. So the idea that I was going to go to them simply because they were in the same partnership, we want to relate with people. We as business people want to relate to other business people. We as individuals want to do it. So you need to show who you are so someone says, oh, that person is similar to me. I want to go to that person. Let's face it, we all have some competition out there. Why do they want to go to you? The way you relate to them, right? that's well, we, real important. We all know that old adage. I mean, people want to do business with people they know, they like, and they trust. I mean, that's, that's all that I call it the golden triad, right? There you I mean, go. you got to get those three, and, and video can do that for you. Some very good information. I, I really th like your ideas about seeing the world through the buyer's eyes. I'll just give you one example of my own. I, my favorite marketing slogan comes from George Zimmer. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. What does George sell? He sells clothes. What is, does his slogan talk about? The way you're going to look <laughs> wearing his clothes. He doesn't talk about clothes. And I think that's just a perfect example of seeing the world through the buyer. In addition, I think the most powerful world in marketing is you anyway. And he uses yeah. it twice. Yeah. So, okay, let's, let's uh, talk about your third and final step, which is the automated follow-up. Why is it, and I'd almost consider it like dating. Why is that so important? Well, it's a great example. We use that example all the time is that, you know, you walk into a bar and you, you know, see this attractive person at the bar and you walk right up and, uh, and the first words out of your mouth are, will you marry me? Be you silly. Know. Nobody would do it. Well, except that most marketers do it a lot. are doing it all day long. I mean, I, I often talk about the fact that, you know, you open your mailbox, you open your email box these days. The primary thing you're getting is stuff that says, buy my stuff. Or as I like to say, buy my crap. Exactly. But the problem with that kind of marketing is, of course, if I'm not in the tiny little sliver of people that need exactly what you're offering me exactly in that moment, I'm either, either digitally hitting delete or I'm throwing the mail piece in, in the recycling bin. So people need time to build that connection with you, and then you need time to be able to kind of follow up with them and show them different facets until you find the thing that they're actually interested in. So if you don't have a follow-up to your upfront marketing, then you're really wasting your resources in, in whatever you're creating, whether it's direct mail or video. I mean, so we tie all.
video to a back end. And we obviously recommend that everyone think through the entire marketing campaign, not just uh, the piece of video they're going to create to get, uh, get attention. So there are great tools out there. We have some. There's certainly lots of other ones. But the, the thing is you want to have your upfront marketing be an invitation to something. And the great thing about an invitation is that I've got to then do an exchange with you and get some contact information so that I can send you what I'm initially giving you so that we can then follow up. And we love to add, obviously, video to that follow-up, which a lot of people don't. They'll just do email marketing. Uh, they'll just do text. They might send in you know, a, a picture or PDF. But why not send yourself through your follow-up campaign? Even if it's direct mail, you can have QR codes or URLs that the person can then come and see a video where you're now following up. And part of it is building relationship. Part of it is making an offer. Part of it might be an entire sales presentation. So One of the things a lot of people don't realize is if you could fill a fairly large room with 100 people that all need your service, your goods or service, right now, fill that room right this minute. Only about 3% of them need what you have right at this moment. Right. They may need it next week. They may need it next month. They may need it next year. And if you don't follow up with them, you're not going to get their business. So that's where we fall down a lot. We have a thing, we call it dominate plus automate. You'll see that on our drmarkandcharlie.com site. The part of our tells you to go sign up for our free demo of what we do with that. It's important to stay after it. And that's the tedious work. A lot of us like to put our hands out, like to go and say hello to people. We enjoy engaging mm -hmm. with people. And then we fall down on the, the follow-up. So if you can automate the details of that, and then when the person says, oh, I might be interested in that now, then you can get back in yourself and make that connection again. But you need to stay in touch with them over the time. And as Dr. Mark says, video is a heck of a great way to do that. Remember, think what they're looking for, not what you want to push at them. And it's building a relationship with them during that time. And the follow-up is real important. Absolutely. And I want to follow up on the follow-up. Pun intended. There you go. On, on the stats that Charlie was just talking about, that 3% idea. I think people so badly misunderstand what, what that data is all about. I mean, they, they've been given ideas or numbers. You know, you've got to talk to 100 people to make a sale. Or you've got to, you know, out of, you send 1,000 mail pieces out and you're happy if you get a 1% return, you know, or 1% 1, 1 response rate. But the problem is that number is a rolling number. It's 3% today. Next week, if I sent the same mailing out, I'd still get 3% or 1% or whatever, but it's a different 1%. Right. So I have to keep you know, following up and following up. I mean, you know, I, I never get the numbers right exactly, but the concept is you know, if I follow up once, I get you know, maybe 1%. If I follow up five times, I might be getting 12%. If I follow up 15 times, I might be getting you know, whatever that percentage is. So, you get more the more you follow up, and, uh, and that's the, the secret. But automating it is key, of course, because most people, you know, even the, the best trained salespeople I know, it's pretty rare if you get them in an honest moment that they've actually followed up a third time with somebody. No, that's right. Let alone 12. Yeah, and, and most of them don't even follow up a second time. Somebody says, no, that's, see, that's part of the problem, too, in whether we're sending direct mail, whether we're making phone calls. When people don't respond to you, you assume that there are only two answers, yes, and no, right. the ones that are the maybes in the middle or I'm not ready for it at the moment, people forget about. So you need to have the follow-up so you stay after them until they're there to say yes. Right, and I think one of the fantasies about video in particular is I'm going to make this awesome, great video, and it's going to go viral. It's yeah. going to go nutso. Yeah. I'm going to have 200 million views next week, and it's going to make me a millionaire. Well, okay, that can happen. Good luck. Let us know when that it does. It takes a lot of work to make that happen. But, but the real issue is, can I do a video that gets your attention, that gets you into a system where I can send you the next video? I, I, you know, if I'm trying to go on a hope and a prayer that my one viral video is going to get everyone to buy my product or service, 